Okay, Law of Attraction. I do have three or four videos on that, and my take is different than what you're seeing on the Law of Attraction videos, and for a very definitive reason. I'll get into that right now. All right, Pure Space Solutions, you're welcome, man. But uh, Law of Attraction does focus in fo focus heavily in uh, thought, and I used to believe it. I, I attempted practicing it many times, but I have a I have something unique that is very difficult difficult to convey to others, and that is the fact that. In, in my imprisonment, I will, it allowed me to reflect and meditate deeper and longer than most people are able without distraction. In my prison cell, sometimes I spend days on end thinking with a pen and, and paper and whatever random notes came out, I would write whole articles about it, I'd, I'd write them down. But <coughs> I made several discoveries during this period. And later those discoveries were confirmed in a book by Ishak Bentov called Stalking the Wild Pendulum. The wild pendulum is this thing that's moving in our mind. I noticed that the more still I was and the greater I tried to empty my mind of anything, I realized that thoughts are invasive and that many of the things that traverse the top topography of my mind aren't my thoughts. And this realization took me down many other rabbit holes. If they're not my thoughts, who are they? And if I am absolutely still and I'm trying to empty my mind, then <coughs> is the thought sphere moving? How is it that I have had some ideas that I believed were genius, only to find out that almost at the exact same time, another researcher, another author came to the same conclusion in India? And I would read, or I would read magazine periodicals from magazines, and I would look, and I would say, "Wow, I, I thought I had discovered this. Where did he get his idea? How did he know that the year 2046 was going to be a complete change and collapse of time? How did this guy know this? But he comes from a totally different perspective, using totally different evidence. A man I've never heard of before, thinking almost offended, thinking I, I, I had found absolute." concrete proof from many historical texts and modern engineers who have studied the Great Pyramid that, man, the Earth is going to be moved from its orbit in November 2046. So, while I'm sitting in the prison cell and I'm thinking about these things, <coughs> I realize that who, who in the free world is able to actually promote a theory that thoughts can change reality if that's all they're doing, if that's all you're doing, how can thought alone do anything? I think things many, many times. No, nobody better than a prisoner, all day long, with nothing else to do but thinking, can tell you that the law of attraction doesn't work on thought alone. And many of you already know that. We're also told that thought with intent. Well, I have. I'm gonna tell you now. I have intended many things, and and I've backed it up with thought. And intent and thought alone is a recipe for nothing but more thought followed with more intent. It is circular, so nothing's ever going to happen. Many of you also know that a new ingredient was added by the people, you know, with the law of attraction, and that was actions. Not only are actions the signs, signs of character, but actions put things in motion. Now, I'm going to add to that because it's absolutely correct. Actions are what make things happen. Not just the thought, the thought is necessary, but the reason actions make things happen is not because you're doing something to go further where, you, where you're trying to go, but this simulacrum that we live in is a sentient biogram. It responds to us. If you were to pay attention to the minutia of your lives, you would see how things happen for you all the time because you wanted them to, and you're acting in accordance and you're going in that direction. But our reality is reactive. It reacts to us. If we actually set out to do something, I'm gonna give you an example here in a minute. If we go out and set out to do something, we're thinking about it, our intent is to do a certain activity to produce a certain result, and we act accordingly, not, all, not always does it, does, does it work. But it's like reality does create events that bring us closer to what we want. I'll give you a case in point. It's not because we're doing something, it's because 
actions are our way to communicate to a completely objective universe of what our intent is, what we want, so it responds accordingly. There's no amount of words that will ever get the universe to respond to you. There is no amount of emotion. But when you actually act and go do things, reality, you, you create a reality tunnel and reality itself knits the perimeters and architecture of that tunnel more and more and more as you continue to do things to further that agenda. For some reason I have seen over and over and over that thought alone, intent alone, thought and intent together don't do anything and thought and intent with some action don't do anything but continued repetitive action toward a certain ideal just like ritual actually does get the universe to respond. Let me tell you, here, here's what happened to me just the last couple of days. All right, many of you know that I got COVID. I still can't believe it because I didn't even believe it. I, I, I'm guilty for thinking it was all bullshit. And uh, now I know I didn't have any cold symptoms. I didn't have any flu symptoms. I, I, just, I just got really fatigued and my appetite was still good. But then all of a sudden, my, I just lost my, my lungs. I don't even want to go into it no more. I've already moved on. This is the last vestige of memory I have of that event. But uh, 